There are still too many people in federal prison who were sentenced under the old regime and who, as a result, will have to spend far more time in prison than they would if sentenced today for exactly the same crime. Well, the department says thousands of drug offenders currently serving time may be eligible for reduced sentences. As you heard the attorney general say right there, some folks have said that prisons are way overcrowded. This might be a way to reduce them. Of course, that move might be part of something else, as you're about uh, to tell it us. It might be part of something else, uh, John. That's why we're so pleased to have Dave Patton, Newsmax Magazine senior editor, with us. David, we take a look at this, and maybe I'm a little cynical because I spent 12 years in the Congress of the United States, but when you have an administration looking for ways to accommodate lawbreakers, when you have a review of the incarceration and the sentences already handed down to people involved in drug offenses, it sounds to me like something big is afoot in terms of the, the realm of genuine amnesty or a form of presidential pardon. And you know, another indication of that, J.D., is if you look at the other side of the aisle, say, say you look at a Rand Paul, for example, he's been very out front on this idea of criticizing the mandatory sentences, of reducing some of these sentences, particularly for drug offenses. Why? What is the constituency there? Well, minorities, especially African Americans, point to the disproportionate number of African Americans who are behind bars and they see this as really a civil rights issue through a civil rights lens so there's clearly a political aspect to doing this. And on a day when the Supreme Court upheld Michigan's ban on affirmative action mm -hmm. you have a situation where via regulation in the Department of Education the Obama administration is looking for a way to quote equalize school discipline which to use your euphemism could be viewed through a civil rights prism but again to speak candidly as a recovering member of Congress it seems to me as if that is a move to try to put in place a quotas via regulation for conduct at elementary schools and uh, that, that's a curious course of action to take in fact this entire notion that somehow we are going to to waive laws or we are going to seek for what can only be considered recompense or retribution in terms of civil rights. This is not a classic progressive approach. It seems to be a punitive type of reflex uh, from this administration. It wasn't that long ago that we heard during the Bush administration the concept of the, of the soft bigotry of low expectations, that what you need to do is equip young people to go out into a highly competitive global arena and to be able to compete and to be able to do those jobs and do them effectively so that they can have the opportunities that are going to truly advance them and their families and so what we're seeing of course whether you're looking at immigration whether you're looking at the drug policy education policy trying to appeal to certain demographic groups rouse them up rev them up get them excited about the stakes in the upcoming election that's really the uh, story underlying all of this but is it in the best interest of those individuals involved and when we talk about immigration I, I said this from the outset of the Obama administration there are those who said oh you're offering too much of a of a worst case scenario mm -hmm. but again as I see what's going on here with uh, taking a look at pardon power taking a look at review of sentences I can easily see this president through a, a proclamation issuing amnesty to every illegal who is in the United States saying if you're here now congratulations you're an American and mindful of his opening volley his opening announcement for mm -hmm. the presidency back in 2008 mm -hmm. Springfield Illinois to wrap himself in the mantle ironically of the first Republican president uh, Abraham Lincoln and to proclaim uh, an emancipation proclamation mm -hmm. for the 21st century mm -hmm. to move to a situation where uh, evoking memories of that of that general pardon that um, that Jimmy Carter issued to the Vietnam uh, draft evaders who went to Canada you can see things being put in place where essentially this president will dare the the House Republican majority to act against him and uh, I, I can see this come together now I hope there's some holes in that reasoning tell me what they are David I think you raise a fascinating question because what you're really asking, J.D., is you're saying, 
What ultimately is the limit? What's the red line where Congress or some other institution, Supreme Court perhaps, comes in and says, no, Mr. President, we do have a constitution. No, Mr. President, we do have balance of powers. You can't uh, change the law unilaterally. You have to operate within the framework constitution. But where would it come from? Would it come from a Congress that seems incapable at times of even, say, passing a budget, for example? It seems un unlikely that that's going to happen, especially when Harry Reid controls the Senate. So then you have to go to the court system, but that's going to probably take years for these cases to work their way up. And in the meantime, you've sort of institutionalized in the federal bureaucracy some of these policies that he's enacting unilaterally. It's a huge concern. And, and if we take a look at Newsmax.com, and uh, John reported on this uh, during the Newsmax Now newscast, what is afoot at Homeland Security to really make the preparations to have Jay Johnson and Homeland Security decide that, well, these illegals are, quote, law-abiding mm -hmm. illegals, dismissing the mm -hmm. fact that the first act in coming to this country was to break our laws and putting in place this almost perverse bipartisan notion on the political front, you see it when we get reports from the Wall Street Journal that Speaker Boehner is, quote, hell-bent on having comprehensive immigration reform. Mm -hmm. When you see all of this coming together, it would appear that a response from generally the conservative community or the Republican community would be fractured and nature may abhor a vacuum, but a political uh, opportunist or one who looks to expand his powers appreciates the fragmentation of the political opposition. At some point, fortunately, the voters have a say and reality has a say. You know, we've seen in the past where there's huge political repercussions. Jeb Bush right now is having repercussions because of his uh, position on immigration. Uh, we've also seen cases in the past where politicians will come in and let people out of prison or decide not to prosecute people and then when some of these alleged criminals or even convicted criminals then go out and they have recidivism, they do it again and it becomes a huge headline, it becomes a political albatross. The case in uh, in Arkansas affecting uh, Mike Huckabee is still on his resume, for example. And let's so. not forget Willie Horton as well. Yeah, exactly. That lives on today. You know, talking about SCOTUS here, and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. wondering if President Obama might be interested in a longer play here in this situation. You know, he's looking at possibly one, maybe two more appointments to the Supreme Court before he leaves the White House. And by doing these executive actions, he, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't see any way that the immigration debate does not wind up at the Supreme Court. And it could be a long time from now after the Obama presidency when he might hope to have a more favorable Supreme Court to weigh in on this issue. But if that's the case, then aren't we really ruling now? Haven't we entered an era where we have periodic executive uh, rule? I think absolutely. And then we that's have the case. periodic Supreme Court stepping in and knocking down those laws. And it seems sort of counterintuitive. Is this any way to run a country? And, and that might be reflected in the approval ratings of Congress or mm. so often the criticized leadership in Congress on both sides of the aisle. Well, I'm, I'm not that much of a recovering congressman that I cannot forget the, the Reagan admonition, which was to always leave people with hope. And Dave, what you mentioned, elections have consequences. Mm -hmm. The upcoming midterm elections could prove to be the reality check before this expansive, um, uh, before this expansion of executive power. And that's the risk that President Obama is running. Because what could happen is a big backlash in November from people who see this are afraid and say, enough. Well, time Dave, will that, tell. That's right. And speaking of time, uh, we're out of time. We have to say enough to this segment. But we want to thank you very much, David Padden, our thank senior you. editor of Newsmax magazine. Now, when we come back, experts are warning of a catastrophic effect of a nationwide blackout. It's the stuff of science fiction, but it's reality. It's called EMP, and we'll talk about that next. We also want you to weigh in on what you've heard us uh, theorize about. Uh, tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. We're coming right back.